Hello, I'm Dr. Stanley Kim. We will continue to discuss hereditary bleeding disorders with platelet function disorders and hemophilia. Thank you for watching. Platelet function defects causes mucocutaneous bleeding, such as nose bleeding, gum bleeding, heavy periods, and easy bruise of the skin. And any platelet dysfunction causes prolonged bleeding time. bernard soulier syndrome is due to platelet GP1B receptor deficiency. The GP1B is the main receptor for von Willebrand factors. So the platelets won't aggregate when treated with the risotacetin, which is supposed to stimulate von Willebrand factors to bind the GP1B. It is also called giant platelet syndrome. The platelet are hu platelets are huge. It's, a, it's as big as neutrophils. So some doctors think the CBS machine may read this giant platelet as a, a WBC, uh, falsely lowering the uh, platelet counts. It may be the cause of mild thrombocytopenia. Glanzmann's thrombosthenia is due to GP2B3 receptor deficiency. This re uh, receptor is the uh, involved in pa final pathway of platelet aggregation. No giant platelets nor thrombocytopenia. Delta storage pole deficiency is due to deficiency of ADP from defective dense granule of the platelets. One of the uh, condition is a Shedia Higashi syndrome. This patient is born with the albinism uh, and the immune deficiency with a frequent skin infection by Staphylococcus. As they grow, neurological dysfunction with dementia for Parkinson's disease develop. Interestingly, they have a dull body in the neutrophil. Dull body is the uh, bluish inclusion body in the cytoplasm of the neutrophil. We don't know exact the nature of it. Nowadays, we use the platelet function analyzer more over bleeding time to test the platelet function because it's accurate and convenient. The principle of that test is to check the platelet aggregation in response to platelet aggregation stimulators such as ADP, epinephrine, collagen, ristocytin, arachidonic acid. bernard soulier syndrome patients have a GP1B receptor defect, the main receptor for von Willebrand factors. So the ristocytin induced aggregation is abnormal. They also have giant platelets and uh, mild thrombocytopenia. Patients with Glanzmann's thrombothenia have a GP2B3A receptor defects. That receptors have to be activated by ADP or other stimulator before fibrinogens bind them for platelet aggregation. Uh, and uh, that receptor involved in the final pathway of the platelet aggregation. So ADP, epinephrine, collagen, arachidonic acid can aggregate when the GP2B3A re receptor are defective or deficient, but they have a normal GP1B receptor and uh, by, uh, von Willen factors, so their ristocytin aggregation is normal. Shadia Higashi syndrome patients have a defective dense granule of platelets. They can't release ADP. When their blood is treated with the ADP, their platelets will aggregate, but in order to continuously aggregate, the platelets has to release ADP, which they can. So the second phase uh, aggregation is abnormal. Patients with a von Willebrand disease have a defective von Willebrand factors, so ristocytin induced aggregation is abnormal. They also have low factor A levels, and uh, uh, it prolongs the uh, PTT. Aspirin, ibuprofen, neprosin is the uh, cyclooxygenase uh, one enzyme inhibitor the COX-1 enzyme. The COX-1 converts arachidonic acid to thromboxane A2, the potent platelet aggregator. So the arachidonic acid can't induce platelet aggregation when they are treated with the aspirin. And the arachidonic acid is also related to the ADP uh, epinephrine collagen. Those stimulators uh, stimulate thromboxane A2 formation. So when they don't have enough thromboxane A2 because of aspirin, the, the, this stimulus can aggregate their platelets. Clopidogrel, prasugrel, and the ticograler are potent DNA uh, uh, inhibitor. They inhibit DNA by blocking ADP receptor, ADP P2I P12 receptor. So the ADP induced aggregation is strongly abnormal.
Clopidogrel is used to prevent clot formation for patients with coronary artery disease or stroke. It inhibits ADP by blocking ADP receptor, more precisely, ADP P2Y P12 receptor, which functions as a door for ADP to enter to, function, to work. But in up to 30% of patients taking clopidogrel, this drug doesn't inhibit platelet aggregation, uh, so-called clopidogrel resistance, which can give uh, serious consequences. Patients who are taking this medicine, hoping to protect the uh, uh, heart, heart, protect from heart attack, stroke, still can have this problem. It's due to deficiency of enzyme cytochrome P3A, CYP3A. Clopidogrel is a prodrug requiring enzymatic oxidation to become an active drug to function. So when patients are lacking the cytochrome P3A, CYP3A, clopidogrel cannot function. It stays as a prodrug. When the patients have a clopidogrel resistance, they need to switch drug to a prosugrel or Tycogrel or as they don't need a P, uh, CYP3A for activation. Hemophilia A is from genetic factor 8 deficiency and hemophilia B from factor 9 deficiency and the genetic factor 11 deficiency is sometimes called hemophilia C. Hemophilia A is the most common factor deficiency and the second most common genetic bleeding disorder after von Willebrand disease. Both A and B hemophilia is uh, are inherited in X-linked recessive pattern, thus mostly affecting men. But 30% have no family history. Their hemophilia is mutated, not inherited. So no family history doesn't mean no disease. Women have a very low chance of hemophilia because they have a 2X chromosome. But they may have a mild hemophilia, uh, even they have a, a one, uh, a, the one X chromosome carries the gene. It's called a symptomatic carrier. It's due to skewed X inactivation. When one X chromosome is completely inactive and the other dominant X chromosome carry the gene, then they have a hemophilia. Hemarthrosis, uh, the joint bleeding, is the hallmark of hemophilia. But in children, prolonged bleeding from vein punctures or heel prick are common early signs of hemophilia. Severe hemophiliacs have a factor level less than 1% moderate 1 to 5 percent and the mild 5 to 40 percent. Of course, they have a prolonged PTT due to a factor 8 deficiency, of, uh, factor 8, 9, or 11 deficiency that belong to intrinsic pathway. They have a normal PT, a normal bleeding time. But the mild hemophiliacs having uh, factor levels over 15 to 20 percent can have a normal PTT. We used recombinant or plasma concentrate factor 8 for treatment. The desmopressin a, a DDABP raised the uh, factor 8 and the uh, von Willebrand uh, factor levels. So the for mild case of hemophilia A, not B, and the uh, von Willebrand disease, we use the desmopressin DDABP. Gene therapy is, uh, is promising nowadays. When the patients receive multiple infusion of uh, plasma factor 8 concentrates, they can develop inhibitor antibodies against factor 8. Then they no longer respond to factor 8 infusion because infused factors bind the inhibitors before they start to work. Then we have to use the bypass product, including activated prothrombin complex. Factor 8, uh, 11 deficiency, uh, the hemophilia C is relatively common in Ashkenaz Jews. Factor 12 is called Hagemann factor, and the factor 12 deficiency does not cause bleeding, although it prolongs uh, PTT. In fact, the first factor 12 patients, Mr. John Hagemann, died of pulmonary embolism, not from bleeding. Factor 8 uh, uh, cross-linked the fibrin to strengthen the, uh, uh, the, the clots. So when the patients have a factor 8 deficiency, they have a problem with the uh, cross-linking uh, fibrins and cause late re-bleeding 24 to 36 hours after the surgery or injury. 
and the umbilical cord st stop bleeding after birth is the characteristic uh, sign of factor 13 deficiency. Their clots uh, are not very strong because it's not cross-linked and uh, easily uh, dissolve in the urea solution. So the urea solubility test is the diagnostic test for factor 13 deficiency. I want to mention that factor 8 deficiency does not prolong PT and PTT. So they have a normal PT and PTT. The final product of coagulation cascade is cross-linked fibrins. But these fibrins uh, will be uh, degraded to fibrin degradation products and the D-dimers uh, by the process called fibrinolysis. This process is carried out by plasmin, plasmin uh, but this plasmin has to be converted from plasminogen by TPA, tissue plasminogen activator. If we have this fibrinolysis process continuous, we will continue, continuously bleed. Those fibrin clots will be dissolved immediately. But we need to have this clot stays until the wound heals. So we have a two inhibitors, uh, plasminogen activator inhibitor one, pi one, and uh, alpha two uh, antiplasmin. But the patients born with deficiency of this pi one and alpha two antiplasmin will have a bleeding problem. It's called abnormal fibrolysis. Thrombolytic therapy with intravenous fibrinolytic drug with TPA is used for the uh, patients with acute ST elevation myocardial infarction. We call it STEMI. Their clots are uh, fibrin, uh, cross-linked fibrin clot completely blocking the uh, coronary artery. So uh, fibrinolysis will dissolve the clots and then save their life. It's most effective in first two hours because irreversible injury starts two to four hours, but we still use it uh, within 12 hours of after onset in clinical setting. But this TPA is contraindicated for non-STEMI, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction or unstable angina because those patients has a platelet clot, not the uh, fibrin clot. So the fibrinolysis won't help but increase the risk of bleeding. They just have heparin, low molecular heparin or antiplatelet drugs therapy. This TPA is also used for the ischemic stroke when the uh, uh, onset is within uh, uh, three to 4.5 hours. When patient has bleeding history and uh, normal PT and PTT, you suspect hemophilia carrier or mild hemophilia because patients with the coagulation factor levels above 15 to 20% have normal PT and PTT. Also factor th uh, 13 deficiency patients have a normal PT and PTT. Patients with a uh, platelet function disorder and the abnormal fibrinolysis have normal uh, PT and PTT because there is nothing to do with the coagulation factor. When the patient has a prolonged PT, PT only, uh, you suspect the factor seven deficiency because factor seven is the only factor involved in extrinsic pathway. When they have a prolonged PTT only, uh, you suspect the factor deficiency involved in intrinsic pathway. There are many hemophilia A for factor eight, B hemophilia C. Von Willeran disease have a factor eight deficiency. Acquired hemophilia A due to a factor eight inhibitors are seen in cancer, lymphoma, pregnancy, or, or immune disease. And we know the hegemon factor, factor 12 deficiency patients have a prolonged PTT without bleeding. When they have a both PT, PTT prolonged, then we suspect the factors involved in common pathway, but they are luckily rare. And when the patient has too much warfarin or heparin, both PT and PTT are prolonged. The lupus anticoagulant is not a bleeding disorder, but thrombotic disorder, but they have a prolonged PTT because of antibody against phospholipid involved in intrinsic pathway. Thank you for watching.